Time now for today's Focus Report. And we go to Slovakia and look at the fallout following the assassination last month of a journalist. 27-year-old Jan Kuciak was investigating high-level graft when he was found murdered at his home, along with his girlfriend. Thousands took to the streets in anger. Minister after minister has resigned, paving the way for a new cabinet lineup. And just this Thursday, the head of the country's anti-corruption police also stood down under growing pressure. But demonstrators say that is not enough. Our team in the capital find out more. Jan Kuciak's desk in the newsroom where he worked remains empty save for some documents relating to his investigation into the Italian Mafia's alleged ties to the Slovakian government. I sat right next to him, and we were working together on investigative cases. And... Kuciak's colleague says journalism in Slovakia is fraught with risk, not only for reporters, but also for the people they interview. People are afraid a lot to speak to journalists because of the climate in our country. When you uncover something, when you speak about something, uh, there's probably a punishment waiting for you if you stop somebody's business. And so so not a lot of people are, are or were willing to talk to journalists. In the 10 years Robert Fico has been in power in Slovakia, this has been the climate. Fico was never a fan of journalists in general, even once describing them as anti-Slovak prostitutes. But the murders of Jan Kuciak and his fiance shocked the nation into action. Every Friday since the killings, thousands of Slovaks have taken to the streets to demand an end to what they see as Mafia rule. Transparency International ranks Slovakia as the sixth most corrupt country in Europe and in the top third globally. Jan's fight against corruption is also our fight. In 2016, Zuzana Hlavkova became an anti-corruption activist after quitting her job at Slovakia's foreign ministry. She observed corrupt practices in public procurement there and blew the whistle. I hope my generation, the post-November 89 generation, is going to change things, because if it's not us, then, then who else? I mean, our parents, they, they fought uh, the Velvet Revolution. They fought for our um, freedom. I think that we sort of owe them um, the victory over corruption. In 1989, the Velvet Revolution ended communism in what was then Czechoslovakia. Fedor Blaszczak, now a professor of philosophy at Bratislava University, took part in those protests. He's back on the streets today, holding up a quotation from that movement's leader. Truth and love has to win over lie and hatred. This is a famous claim of Václav Havel from November 89. This level of corruption in Slovakia is beyond imagination of a Western audience. Enough is enough. We don't want this, we, we don't want Kazakhstan, we, are, we don't want a uh, Russian type of uh, doing politics. Killing journalists, it's a little bit like killing yourself, you know, because he was the one who served you. Jan Kuciak's work implicated Robert Fico's government in ties to Italian organized crime. In a bid to fend off any suspicion that he might himself be a gangster, the then Prime Minister staged this rather odd PR stunt. Ladies and gentlemen, here are one million euros. This is for anyone who has the courage to tell the police any valuable information about this crime. Fico's million euro reward pledge did not quell public anger and he resigned as Prime Minister on the 15th of March. But as the leader of the ruling centre-left and pro-European Smear party, he still wields considerable power. It is far from clear who could replace the strongman of Slovakian politics, but if Smear does lose power it could spell bad news for the European Union, according to this analyst. The opposition is a mishmash of Eurosceptic, pro-Russian, xenophobic and Islamophobic ideas. There's also far-right populism. Basically, it's a variety of shades of brown. If the opposition comes to power, Slovakia will turn away from the West. That's what's been happening in Poland and Hungary. I'm very afraid that the current opposition would take us down the same path if it were in charge. That is not what most of these protesters want. They hope that if their movement manages to force early elections, it will also give rise to a new political elite in Slovakia, 
one that is not only liberal and pro-Western, but also honest.